Good morning, good morning, family. God, God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother Sam Lopez, aka DJ Sam Rock, and you're watching the Morning Devo. Jesus said what the series that started months ago because I noticed that Jesus was quoting from the old covenant. Yet in my mind, right, I was like, why would Jesus, the Lord of the New Covenant, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, quote old covenant scripture when he's the fulfillment of it well i answered my own question um, by doing this study and it was supposed to be like one or two weeks we're on our 44th episode right so i'm like wow jesus what he said what god said through the lord amen him being the living word is so powerful that it's worth finding out so in this episode in 44 um, we're going to take it to the next extreme or the next level, in my opinion, because Jesus now is talking about life after death, right? Because he's the one who could give life and he's the one who could take life. So the New Testament for sure shows that Jesus is indeed the mighty God who has come among us as a human being. The authority of Jesus we're talking about today on John, in John chapter 5, verse 24, John 5, 24. Amen. And that there's a scripture where Jesus quoted right there. So powerful. And it has me thinking a lot because I'm like, wait a minute. There's something he said there. A couple of things he said there. Amen. That I was like, really? That's that's kind of cool. It's for our benefit. Amen. That he said it. And what Jesus says he means and what he means he says. And when Jesus says a thing, it is a thing because he is the truth. Amen. So let me just get over here. Out of the screen right here, get back to my main screen so I could get ready to start sharing. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave them on the live chat. If you're listening from whatever podcast platform you're listening from, there should be a way to connect with me. If all else fails, if it gets too complicated, I don't want you to be distracted. Go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, and you can hang out with me over there as well as a, as a live chat, as a way um, that you could connect, contact, pray requests. It even has a live Bible that you could follow along in the scriptures. And also, um, there's also my notes. Every time we go live, there's notes there. So, amen. I think that will help you out tremendously so you can follow along with um, the mindset of today. So Jesus said, what episode number 44? We're going to be in John chapter 5, verse number 24. Amen. I'm excited about this one. Amen. Pastor Michael Jakes, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's what we do here in the morning and every day, as a matter of fact. And I try to keep the praise of the Lord on my lips daily because he's the only one that's worthy of the praise, honor, worship, and respect. And reverence and all that. He gets it all from me. I don't know. He gets it all from me. So listen. In other words, I hope, I hope nobody takes this as a little clip and says, Oh, Sam said that Jesus gets everything from him. No, the praise, the honor, the worship, all of that comes from me to him um, as a way of expression of worship. Amen. That's what I mean. Let me clarify that because I know we're in a clip um, season of life. Amen. People will take little clips out of your videos and then they'll run with it and say oh did you hear what this person said and then the clip will go viral but you know it'll be a big misunderstanding so i wanted to clarify that asap so questions comments concerns any prayer requests what we're going to do right now we're going to pray and then after we pray we'll share this out for like 60 seconds to as many people that come to our heart or to our mind and we'll keep on moving from there amen so father i thank you so much for every single person that's connecting now who will connect later, who will listen now, who will watch later at their convenience. I pray, Lord God, I had your protection over their lives. I pray, Lord God, that you continue to elevate us, Lord God, according to your word, that you want us to, us to live in an abundant life. Abundant living, Lord God, is only possible because you have promised it. So I pray your promises forth of abundant life. I pray, Lord God, victory over any demonic oppression, suppression, um, anything that's trying to hinder our walk, I come against that in the powerful name of Jesus. I pray for my family, for my whole bloodline, from the very youngest family member to the very oldest and everyone in between that you would touch 
and heal every single infirmity, every single sickness in my family line, and um, starting you know with myself and my immediate family. And for those on the other side of the screen, representing their families, on the other side of this mic, representing their families, I pray that over them as well. We're living in perilous times, and I know, Lord God, that you said, be of good cheer because you have come and overcome this world already. So I thank you for that. And in the meantime, Lord God, we will give you honor, worship, and praise, and I thank you so much for what you're going to do today in your word, through your word, and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. And those who agree, say amen. Listen, if you don't agree, don't say amen, but hold on. Amen? So that way you could get the idea of what's going on here on the Morning Devo. So let's take 60 seconds to share this out together. When we come back, we'll get right into our Morning Devo for today. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. We're back here on the Morning Devo. Let's get into today's Morning Devo. Amen. And I'm calling this one from death to life. It's really about the authority of Jesus. Amen. He has the authority. He gives life. He can take life. And when God takes somebody's life, is he really killing somebody or murdering people? No, he's not. He has the power to resurrect people from the dead. So therefore, he could take you from death to life. Death to life. So get that picture in your head because when something is dead right and it comes to life that's not a natural thing that is a super natural thing so we don't serve the god of creation we serve the creator god we don't serve a naturalistic humanistic you know god we serve a supernatural eternal god the God who created everything we see, everything we don't see, the stars, the galaxies, the moon, the sun, the planets, and he holds everything together. I had a, a vision last night about, because I heard that, you know, in the, in the Psalms it says, you know, how great is our God, the creator of the whole world, I'm paraphrasing, and I, I just had this picture of the world on its axis spinning, right? <laughs> and I, I had this picture that Jesus had his finger up like this, and he was spinning the earth like a basketball around his finger. That's how powerful our Lord is. That's how big our God is. And he could take us from death to life. Amen. And we'll see scriptures right now, uh, a scripture that shows it. Amen. And he says it. That's most important. He said it out of his very own mouth. Amen. And Jesus, when he says a thing, I always say it is a thing. Let's get into it. So here we are. Jesus said what? Episode 44, I can't believe how far we're getting with this, amen, and I believe we could continue and continue to keep on going um, with this message. From death to life, John chapter 5, verse 24, from death to life. I want to ask you a question, that this right here will really help you out and help me out, amen, um, to move forward in victory in the Lord. This is the question. Do you commit to follow Jesus? Now, before you answer that right away, count the cost. If you haven't noticed, following the Lord and being a Christ follower in the times we're living in now is not popular. As a matter of fact, um, the scripture, when it prophesies about people calling things that are evil good and people that are calling um, wrong things good, uh, right things, and they're exchanging the truth for a lie. The scriptures speaks of that, prophesied about that, and it's happening in our generation. 
Amen. Sister Joanne, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devos. Good to see you, my sister. So the question is, do you commit to follow Jesus? Not to follow a religion, not to follow a denomination, not to follow a church, not to follow me, not to follow an evangelist, a pastor, apostle, teacher, prophet. No. Do you commit to follow Jesus? Think about it real close. You might be a Christian, a believer in the Lord, and you identify in Christ, and yet you have issues when it comes to following Jesus. I know it sounds weird, because how could you be a believer in Christ and not follow him? Exactly. That's why I want you to think this through, so that way you can know where you are right now in your walk. Amen. Think it through. Don't be ashamed. Amen. Uh, If you want to answer it on the live chat, you can. So, in simple terms... Committing to follow Jesus is the recognition that you belong to Jesus Christ and that his desires control the way you live. So we get a new heart. We get a new mind. We get a new walk. We get a new talk. Amen. Amen. We come from death to life. You see the tree in the background? If you're watching online, the tree in the background that I picked on this photo is because the branches on the left side of it. And everything that's withered on the left side. It's the same tree. It's the same tree, right? But you see one side is dying and the other side is living. How could that be? How could that be? Because I believe this tree right here has the power that was given by the light, the sun, um, the soil. It's rooted and it has the power to come back to life. Amen. But for whatever reason, there's a left side of this tree that's dying. Sometimes in life, the left side of our life, if you want to call it for this illustration, is dying. But the right side is living. Amen. And the left side is the people or the part of your life that doesn't want to commit to follow Jesus, that doesn't want God, that doesn't want to do what God wants us to do, that doesn't allow um, God to control the way we live does not let his desires to control the way we live. This happens a lot. Amen. And if I'm not careful, it can happen to me. If you're not careful, it can happen to you. But thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy over our lives that you showed us how good you are. And for a lot of people, it's already too late. In other words, not too late to follow Jesus. It's already too late to be convinced not to follow him because we already saw the goodness of the Lord. And my camp, where I'm from, amen, in my region, there's so many of us that said, listen, the world can't offer us anything. It's too late. No one can argue us out of the kingdom of God because we weren't argued into the kingdom of God. No one forced us to believe in Christ. So no one could take us out of believing in Christ. We believe in the Lord. I believe in the Lord because he proved himself in my life and changed my life, changed my heart, changed my mind, gave me his desires. And now he controls the way I live. It means you are his to use to love people, both in your life and throughout the world through mission, because we are on the Great Commission. So we're on a mission. Amen. I got this statement, um, this quote from Bonnie Sala. Um, Go look her up and you can see some good articles that she wrote. So here's the scripture. John chapter five, verse 24. John chapter five, verse number 24. Very truly, I tell you, in other words, truly, truly, or amen, amen, I tell you, this is Jesus, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me, not who created me, who sent me, has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. You see that? I say this a lot and I quote this a lot because Jesus said it. And when I found it, when I looked at it, I was like, Wait a minute. We're not even going to be judged. As believers, we're not going to be judged. Amen? Because we're crossing over from death to life. We've already done it through the Lord Jesus. And he's saying, truly, truly, I tell you, <clears throat> I tell you, amen, amen, I tell you, whoever, and this is for whoever hears the word of God and believes in the word of God, the living word of God, which is the Lord, and who believes in who the Father sent which is the only begotten son, Jesus. 
This narrows down to the Lord. This narrows down to God. This narrows down, narrows down to the logos, the living word of God. So there could be no mistake who Jesus is talking about. He's talking about himself. Whoever hears my word, my word, and believes him who has sent, who sent me, has eternal life. Just say that. You have eternal life and will not be judged. You see that? Some people are judging themselves. Oh, man, I can't believe I did this. I'm condemning myself. No, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're condemning yourself because of shame and guilt. Well, guess what? That shame and guilt got to go according to the word of God. We don't live under shame. We don't live under guilt. We live in the power of Holy Spirit God who enables us to come from death to life. So believe in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged. You see that? Jesus said it. Will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Now, you could look this up. You could do a word study. As a matter of fact, I did a word study, a quick one. So that way you could see and break this down a little bit more. I'm going to butcher that word, but let's try it. The Greek word for believes is pisteo. Pisteo. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> I'm not a Greek scholar and I don't speak Greek. It speaks of more than just believing in Jesus, but actively committing one's trust to him. You see that? Believing in is not enough. So you could believe that and then you could believe in. You could trust that or you could trust in. So we're talking about more than just believing in Jesus. We're talking about actively committing your trust to him. There is a difference. That's next level right there. The Pharisees did not doubt Jesus, Jesus' ability to heal because they saw him heal people. They saw the signs, miracles, and wonders that he performed. But they rejected his claims of equality with the Father. And they refused, hear this, they refused to put their trust in him. That's why they were so angry at the Lord. They were like, who gives you this authority? No, Jesus has the authority. Amen. The authority of Jesus comes from who he is. The authority of Jesus comes from the father because he is the only begotten son. He has the authority. So they didn't doubt Jesus's ability to heal the sick. They rejected his claims of equality with the father and they refused to put their trust in him. Jesus makes it clear that to reject him, you're really rejecting the father. So to reject Jesus is to reject the father and to accept on the other end, to accept the son is to accept the father also. Right? So think about it. It's more than believing. You believe that, I'd rather believe in. You trust that, I'd rather trust in. Actively committing my trust to him, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a little word study I did on this portion of scripture. Because it will continue to blow you up. Now look at it now after we know a little bit of behind the scenes and dug a little bit into the word study. Now we look at it again. It should illuminate more. It should light up more. It should make more sense. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him, right? So we know it's commit to him, trust in him. Amen. Who sent me has eternal life. God put his stamp on it. The Messiah's message, the Savior's signature, when he says, truly, truly, amen, amen, very truly, I tell you. you. You believe in him, you trust him, you actively commit your life to him, amen. You have eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. And you know. You know you were once blind, now you can see. You know you were dead, and now you're alive. You were dead in trespasses and sins, so was I. We were spiritually dead, now we're spiritually alive in Christ. We are dead to sin and alive to Christ. Amen? Let's keep it Bible. Let's keep it Scripture, because that's what we have in us. We have the Word of God in us, the living Word of God, by way of Holy Spirit. So we have this good news message in us. Amen? We have eternity set in our hearts. We know there's more to life than what we're experiencing right now. And if you don't know that, let me encourage you to know that. Amen. We have the word on it. And Jesus said it. 
He brings things from death to life. We're crossed over already. Amen. We're here, right, for the temporary, but we have an eternal life set before us. So I, I love Jesus because he answers, the to me, some important questions in my life. He answers the, the question of origin. Where did we come from? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, you know, the fall of man. But the first two chapters of Genesis explains where we came from. God created us from the dust of the earth, Right? Then now what does that mean? It means that we have a purpose. God created us for a purpose in this life. And after the meaning, we now we can know between right and wrong. Because God wrote the law of the Lord is written on our hearts. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. We know what's good. We know what's evil. Amen. And we don't literally have to have the Bible in front of us to decide what's right and what's wrong. To know what's evil and what's good. He wrote the scriptures basically on our hearts. And also now that we know the morality portion, now we know where we're headed. We have eternal life in Christ. Outside of that eternal life of Christ, you're on your own. You're dead in your trespasses and sins. There is no hope for eternal life. You'll be separated from God for eternity. And I don't think that's life. Amen. So you're going to die, dying, die, dying all the way, all through eternity. But if you accept Christ, you accept the Father because the two are one. You accept Christ, you accept the Father, he'll send Holy Spirit, the three in one. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So we have it all. We have everything we need to live this life out. Don't let anybody try to convince you that this is all make believe when we have the Lord himself quoting um, this truth. Out of his very own mouth and his word never returns to him void. His word is so powerful that when we speak his word, his word breaks through all barriers, breaks through all doubt, breaks through all demonic oppression or any wall that the enemy is trying to put up, breaks right through that, boom, and pushes through and accomplishes what his word was set to accomplish. We are on the winning team. That's why we can speak this way with confidence, knowing that we have what the Lord says we have, knowing that we have eternal life, knowing that we were once blind, that we were once dead, but now we're alive and we can see. We were once deaf, but now we can hear the word of God, right? Sometimes um, I think about in the beginning when I first got saved, when I would be in a worship session and people were worshiping, praising, I'm looking around at everybody, and people are lifting their hands, screaming hallelujah, you know, and I was just like with my hands crossed because I was so afraid to express myself to the Lord. And I know because I was worrying about what people would think. This is when I first got saved. And one day I decided, you know what? What am I ashamed of? Because when I was in the world, man, there was no shame in my game, and I was doing all kind of crazy stuff. So one day I just decided to lift one hand up. And I felt the power of God. I lift up my second hand and I put it all the way up. And ever since then, I was like, wow. It felt like I touched heaven with my worship, with my praise. It felt like I literally touched heaven. And from that point on, I said, wait a minute. There's more to this whole worship experience. There's more to this whole praise experience. There's the living God that we're singing about or we should be singing about, that we're praising, amen, that we're declaring his word through song, through music, amen. So my worship and praise, I have to lift up my hand and surrender to this Lord, to my Savior, to the God of heaven and earth. Heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. Remember that that vision I had that I told you about, Jesus with his fingers spinning the world on its axis from his finger like a basketball? That's the authority of Christ. That's how powerful he is. And it's way more powerful than that. I'm just trying to, you know, wrap my mind around the power and authority of the Lord. The one who says we will not be judged because we're passing from death to life. And he has the authority to give us life. He has the authority um, to take us out of here if he wanted to. Amen. But his plans are perfect and good. You're in good hands. You're in the perfect hands. You're in the hands of the Lord. And no one, the Bible says, Jesus said, no one can pluck any one of his out of his hand. We are safe, we are secure, we have eternal life. Amen? And now that I'm saying that, it reminds me of uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, who went to be with the Lord the other day. Amen? And when you talked about, when he talked about eternal security, he got excited because he knows his eternal security is now where he's at. He has now went from, passed on from this side of eternity to the next, and he's in the presence of the Lord. 
And he's been preaching it for 50 years, right? And more than that, 64 years, I think, in ministry. He died at 90 years old preaching the gospel. And he just preached uh, a couple of weeks ago on Easter Sunday, if I'm correct. Amen. And man, talked about the resurrection. And then he meets the resurrected Christ after he transitions from life here to the life over there in eternity, the kingdom of God. So we have nothing to fear. We shouldn't fear death. We shouldn't fear illness or sickness. We should come against those things. Let's come against everything that doesn't belong in our lives. Amen. By using the power of God's word, by the authority of God's word through the Lord Jesus. Let's let's change our concepts and our ideas about speaking down on ourselves. Let's forgive ourselves, forgive others. Amen. Let's continue to move forward with, with the, what the power of the Holy Spirit God gives us. He gives us everything we need to live this life out in godliness and righteousness. He credits us righteousness. Jesus paid it forward. He paid the sin debt. So we shouldn't be living as sinners. I know a lot of us, and I continue hearing this, and it's starting really to, um, to mess with me. I have prominent preachers, radio broadcasters, authors who wrote books, they're calling themselves present day sinners. Yeah, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. What, why are we calling ourselves sinners if we're the righteousness of Christ? If we are the royal priesthood, if we are, the, yes, we deal with sin, but that's not our identity. I always tell people, what you do is not who you are. So if I sinned, it's not who I am. I'm not a sinner. I'm a saint saved by God. Amen. Living in a sinful, broken world and the flesh that I'm battling from now until Jesus comes and takes us out of here. The flesh wants us to sin and I cannot be possessed. Right. I know deliverance is trending right now all through the Internet with deliverance messages, deliverance preachers, deliverance services and all that. Uh, A born again, blood washed, born again believer in Christ and not only a person who just believes in God, but actively commits their life to the Lord. Amen. Cannot be demon possessed. Sorry. Um, find in the scriptures, show me where there's a, a demon possessing a child of God. You will not, you will find harassment. You will find, you know, there, the, the demons are trying to influence us to do other things to distract us, but they cannot come into the temple of God where the Holy spirit of God resides. I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, they're trying to push this idea. I think they're dealing with people's emotions. So that way they could go to these deliverance services, born again, blood washed, maybe made some mistakes, maybe are uh, being controlled by the fleshly desires. Amen. Um, That's what I think it is. The boils down to the flesh. I'm born again. There's no way. That a demon could come reside in the temple of God where Holy Spirit resides. Holy Spirit God resides in my body. So therefore, there is no vacancy for a demon to possess, to take over, to take control or to own right my body, my temple. There's no way. The flesh could activate some things. Demons can influence some things. But a demon cannot live in a Holy Ghost filled believer in Christ, child of God. Amen. Pastor Michael Jack, Jake says, amen. We cannot be possessed. And I know there's a big thing going on. It's a trend. And unfortunately, some brothers and sisters have branded Christianity as deliverance ministry. And it's a, to me, it's a money grab, to be honest. And they're dealing with people's emotions and it's a form of manipulation. And that form of manipulation is actually witchcraft, if you think about it. Let's preach Jesus. When you speak Jesus, people are going to want to give. People are going to know who they are. They're going to know they're already delivered. They're going to know how to battle the flesh. They're going to know how to battle the mind. Amen. Teach Jesus. All those deliverance preachers, teach Jesus. As a matter of fact, the mind-boggling part of all of this, about deliverance preachers and ministries, that are going to say we're delivering and casting out demons. We have authority to do that by the authority of the Lord Jesus. The mind boggling thing is how can a demon hang out in a church service from beginning all the way to end and then go forward at the end? So now they got the, the welcome, they got the, the opening prayer, they got the praise and worship, 
They should be worshiping Jesus. The name should be coming out their mouths. Then they get the word preached. And then at the very end, they hung out for all of that. I don't know what demon in their right mind would stay knowing that Jesus is being praised. And they hate the name of Jesus. They tremble at the name of Jesus. But okay. So they went through all of that. And then at the end of the service, they come to the front to be delivered, to be exercised, to be cast out. I mean, I'm not going to give credit to the demons, but I don't think they're that dumb to stay all the way through a service and that they know they're going to be cast out. <laughs> I have a long one here. Amen. Sister Joanne, I'm going to try to read this. It's long. I thank God. I thank God for another day that we get to it to me. I went through so much in my life so far. Only my brothers and sisters knows what I went through. I shared this out to you. Um, they are because you are my brothers and sisters and I am still going through more. I have to go for surgery again because my one kidney is not too good. But I pray to God every single day, uh, no matter where uh, you are at or what you are doing or what you are thinking. God knows what you are thinking and what is going through your mind. Amen. I'm sorry, there's a lot here. I'll try to read it. Um, God is so good with me. And my husband, my husband right now is going through chemo treatment and it is so much, it is so much that I have to do every day, three times a week. I have to take him to his blood, get his blood work, blood work done. But I do really believe in my Lord, my Lord. Um, I pray to every day that I'm sorry, I'm trying to see everything here through so much. I have my sister is still yet in a coma. Yet I'm not going to lose my hope. She maybe won't be able to talk no more, but uh, I'm not. But she will be there and open up her eyes for us. I think I thank you, Sam, and your wife uh, that listen to everything that I am sending to you. May God bless you. Amen. We're standing with you, believing with you, hoping with you, trusting it in the Lord that lives inside of you. Amen. And if you notice, Joanne, you've been going through this for a long time. Who's sustaining you? Who's maintaining you? Who's delivering you uh, from any other thoughts other than the thoughts of the Lord to be inside of you? That's the work of Holy Spirit God in your life. Amen. So let's trust and believe that the God of the impossible, there's nothing impossible for God. Let's trust and believe and move forward and speak it over our lives. We have nothing to lose, everything to gain, and God will be glorified and he will be praised. He will be honored. He will be worshiped because People are watching what Sister Joanne is going through, hard times, and she's still trusting and holding and believing in the Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. And I do the same when hard times hit my life. I still believe and trust and hope in the Lord. There's no one else I could trust in the spirit realm, right? Um, the spirit, Holy Spirit, God, he, the Holy Spirit, it's not a it, it's a he, the Holy Spirit, is inside of me, reminding me of his word, of his goodness, of his faithfulness, of his truth, amen, and of the authority of Jesus. So I I'm out of here. Let's continue to pray for Sister Joanne Torres and the Torres family in their life, for their lives. Amen. Continue to pray for me and my family, and I'll continue to pray for you and your family. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.